The gradual easing of the lockdown gets extended by the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, the PTF. This time, the People's Democratic Party rejects it. And drama plays out in a little state as some protests against the All Progressive Congress APC National Chairman Adams Oshomale, while another group shows support for him. On the same day, this is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. The Presidential Tax Force PTF on COVID-19 has extended the gradual easing of the lockdown by two weeks across the nation. The extension was announced by the PTF Chairman and Secretary to the F F Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, as President Mahmoud Buhari did not address the nation. In response, the People's Democratic Party rejected the extension, saying that there are no laws in Nigeria where the powers to broadcast presidential executive orders, such as the declaration of curfews and restrictions of movement, be vested in the office of the SGF. And joining us to discuss this is Sheena Fabiro Bryan, a politician and legal practitioner, and also wrote to me, Sankore, a journalist, both via Skype. Good evening, gentlemen, and thank you for joining on the show. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Byron. How are you doing? Good evening. Mr. Sankore, how are you doing this evening also? Fine, thank you. Good evening. The Presidential Tax Force, in its wisdom, decided to extend the phase Fine, lockdown by another two weeks. Do you consider this a step in the right direction? I'm going to start with you, Mr. Sankore. Well, it depends. Are we talking about the science or the politics? Both, both, both the science and then both the politics in it and the economics of it also? Well, the science is going generally in the right direction. And uh, I believe that some of the relevant people there, like Chikwe Hepazu and uh, Sanya Liu, are well qualified to talk about the science of it. Now, we do have a problem, you know, with the politics and the economics. Uh, of it. Because for, for one thing, I understand that, for instance, throughout most of today, uh, that there was a trending hashtag, something along the lines of stop the COVID scam, which generally suggests that the communication of it is not as good as it should be. And by that, I mean the communication of the politics and the economics of it. Because I can see, for instance, that uh, a lot of young people don't quite appreciate that, one, you can be COVID positive and not be sick or die. But two, and very importantly, the, all the comments about COVID in Nigeria being different from COVID in, you know, with the Italians or the Spanish or the Americans, it's just based on a lack of understanding that a lot of those 40, 50, 90,000 people that have died in those countries, many of them are over 60. And many of them have high blood pressure, you know, suffering chemotherapy, have, uh, you know, kidney issues, have asthma and, and so forth. In Nigeria, all, most of those categories of people have died long ago after a brief illness. So it's not been explained properly that the reason why you see people in COVID isolation centers play is that these are people in their teens and in their early 20s. So that's one part of it. The economics, of course, is that the palliative issue is a scandal. You know, the Nigerian state has never really acquired the capacity to you know, implement any reasonable welfare policy. So obviously, a lot of people want to go out and go and end their living. The politics of it, I mean, let's not even go there. The politics is just not what it should be, both in the way the policy is designed and in the way it is implemented. Mr. Byron, do you consider this step a good step in the right direction, considering all of the parameters of the science, the politics, and the economy of it? How do you respond? 
Well, you know, um, there are several ways to look at things. And, and I, I, it, it might, I just like to um, caution. Mr. Barry, we seem to be having a problem with your connection there, and so we might like to try to reconnect back with you while we continue with Mr. Sankore. Now, Mr. Sankore, Nigerians were expecting the president to address them, but the announcement was later made by the SGF okay. and chairman of the PTF, Boss Mustafa himself. Now, how, how do you react to this? How will you assess the communication strategies deployed in handling the COVID-19 situation so far? Mr. Sankore. Well, I mean, quite sadly, it's poor. It's poor. You know, I mean, if you have a scenario in which an expectation has been created that the president is going to address the nation, and then an hour or two to that, it is pulled without explanation. You know, the issue is not that the president did not end up addressing the nation. Anything could have happened. The president could have had a headache. You know, he's a human being. But in not explaining why the change of mind, or, or in fact pretending that it was the public that generated a false expectation themselves. You know, I mean, it, it undermines the whole politics and policy of it, because there is then an assumption that, that there is something wrong and nobody understands what is wrong. Now, Mr. Sankore, well, ba basically, now, I, we need to understand the fact that, yes. Mr. Sankore, you are saying? Sorry? Yeah, I thought you were saying something on. Yes, I was saying that it's not that the president did not address the nation. That is the issue. The president could have developed a headache, you know. He's a human being and he's an elderly person. So if he developed a headache, they should tell us he has a headache and he couldn't think. But when the expectation is created by the presidency, not by the public or the media, the expectation is created and people do expect to hear from the president. And then suddenly the president does not appear and then it's delegated to the task force. It does create an issue. In fact, there are circumstances under which it could create a constitutional issue. Mr. Byron, are you there? Can you hear me now, Mr. Byron? I hear you. I can hear you clearly. I'm just wondering why you can't hear me. Okay, great. So we, 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 I need your take on the fact that Nigerians expected a, a presidential address from Mr. President yesterday, but that didn't happen. Um, we got an address rather from the chairman of the PTF and the secretary to the, Feder uh, to the federal government, yes. Boss Mustafa. Yes. How, how do you I react that. to that? Well, in the first place, was it said that the president himself would make the announcement? But two, 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 two addresses so far, and I think Nigerians typically were expecting the third announcement was going to come from him. Well, it's, it, it, well, you know, yes, we would have expected the, the announcement to come from him. But for me, you know, it, it's a question of was, did the government itself say the president was going to make an announcement? And I think that, you know, it's neither here nor there. The most important thing that communication was given to us by the federal government. Uh, and was that communication accurate? Was it acceptable? I think it's the communication that the PDP and other interested parties have been responding to. Uh, what I was going to say is that, look, the you know has several ramifications. Let's not uh, forget that one of the biggest losers probably in a lockdown is the government itself that is not in a position to collect revenue. Um, I would believe the government has exposed us in terms of the health infrastructure we have, and a lot of things are being discovered. I think the period of the lockdown, too, is supposed to help some kind of tracing and management of populations up until a point in time where they can put things in place. Having said that, my colleague has spoken about the palliatives. There are a number of people who live on a day-to-day -day basis. They would expect some kind of palliatives. The federal government has not really given us comfort that, that it has the capacity or the ability to distribute palliatives. 
So, of course, people are bound to be suspicious. Whether the PDP's own response is without politics and its objective is another case. It's another matter entirely. But, Mr. Byron, how would you assess, in your own capacity, how would you assess uh, the, the measures, the communication strategy deployed so far by the federal government in addressing the nation in regards to the pandemic? How would you assess it? Well, the federal government has never been good in communicating. I'm sorry, that's just the point. Whether it's the pandemic, in and out of the pandemic, they have not been very good. Mr. Sankore, are you there? Let me just throw that at you, Mr. Sankore. I need, I need your assessment on the, the, the communication strategy so far deployed by the federal government in, in disseminating information COVID. as it affects COVID-19. Mr. Sankore. Um, I can. Well, I don't think it takes any amount of uh, genius to see that the communication strategy is not as good as it should be. I mean, it could be much, much more better. Uh, a lot of things are often not communicated. It's no, it's well. Uh, I'm sure when you say communication strategy, you are, you are not talking of the oratory skills of the SGF or any other person at the briefing, you know, it's what is being communicated and how it is being communicated. For instance, there are issues which are only just being corrected weeks after. I mean, we never used to know, for instance, how many tests have been conducted. So we didn't know if it was 100 people tested and 90 were positive, or whether it was 10,000 tested and 90 were positive. Now we know that just about 35,000 people have been tested, and uh, Chikwe Hekwazu has now said, you know, and I congratulate him on it, that subsequently we will be getting the testing data on a weekly basis. He, he made a very important point that in Nigeria, there is no indicator that is gathered on a daily basis, which underlines a huge weakness, huge historical weakness of the Nigerian state. So it's not just, you know, how it is communicated, it's the substance of what is communicated, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry to say that you know, the government has not been doing a very good job of it. They are improving, but they are not at the level where they should be at all. Earlier, in response to Boss Mustafa addressing the nation in the place of the president, they'd say that the president said was going to address the nation. Um, do you want to react to that quickly? You have the opinion that we expected the president to have addressed us. The issue and his view that regardless of whoever addresses the point is there was a communication, either the president or the SGF. Well, like I said, even if an expectation was created that the president will address us, if that expectation changed for any reason, they should have explained to us why that change happened. Because for most of the day, what we are made to understand was that the president is going to address the nation yesterday evening. And then suddenly communication came out from his media spokespersons that the president is no longer going to uh, address the nation. Like I said, the president is a human being. He could develop a headache. There is no problem with that. But they need to tell us these are the reasons why the president is not going to address the nation and he has delegated it to so so person. You know, it's the entire mystery about why was the expectation created, then why was it withdrawn without explanation? I mean, this is what leads to all the drama, really. Not that the president speaks with us or does not. It's the, it's the drama and the mystery around it that causes the tension. The PDP, in, in its reaction, holds that the announcement by the SGF is another manifestation of abuse of our statutory office arising from the abdication of responsibilities by President Mohamed Buhari since the last five years, which had also become more pronounced in this fight against COVID-19. Do you agree? Well, I'm, I'm not a politician, and I'm certainly not a PDP member, so <laughs> by no means will I you know, speak for or but, align myself. But the abdication of responsibilities by the president, because this was one instance where the SGF had to address us in the stead of the president. Well, you know, we've been over some of this earlier when we are talking about 
you know, what created the expectation that the president was going to address us. And I think it was reasonably clear from the beginning that there was an expectation that the president will address us. Now, the president is a human being. We always have to underline it. The president could have developed a headache. The president could have been unwell. You know, so, and, you know, and that's not a crisis. What causes a crisis is often the lack of explanation. I mean, we saw a scenario in which the president went abroad for many months until today. We don't know what was wrong with the president. And it created a crisis. So, you know, it's not that the president is present or absent. It is why. And, you know, is it communicated to us in a way that we understand so that there is no political or constitutional vacuum? Now, you're a journalist of repute in your own, in your own capacity. Uh, let's look at the legality of this. Is the office of the SGF legally vested with the powers to broadcast presidential and executive orders, such as declaration of curfews and restrictions of movement? Well, look, I have a problem with executive orders, and so do many constitutional lawyers in the country. In fact, I mean, in, 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 in Lagos State, an executive order, you know, restricting people on the last Saturday of the month in the name of environmental sanitation was set aside by the courts. So, I mean, there is an issue with executive orders on, on its own, never mind whether it can be delegated to the SGF or not. All right, interesting, you did make mention about Lagos State. Let, let's, come to the, let's come to the issue of Lagos State right now as, as, as it affects um, the easing of this lockdown and its extension. Now, um, the Lagos State government has, has actually stated and considering the full reopening of businesses, churches, and mocks. But the present reality is, should this be a consideration in your opinion? I think it's extremely dangerous to suggest that uh, the, the economy will be fully opened that uh, you know, churches and mosques will be opened. Look, in, a, in another line of work I do, I do development and policy work, you know, and I have never seen anywhere in the world with the number of tests that have been done that anybody will be saying that the economy and religious you know, houses are going to be reopened. To his credit, when the governor spoke on it, he did say that, you know, he gave conditions, he said, this may be in weeks or this may be in months, depending on the data and indicators. So the governor did qualify it. But there are other people that have been saying that it should be done immediately and that there is no COVID. Look, if we have done one million tests, we can say for sure what is happening. If we've done 35,000 tests you know, across the country, not just in Lagos, then we are in no position to say whether it is safe or dangerous. The U.S. is just over 300 million people. We are just over 200. The U.S. has done over 10 million tests. The Germans are just over 80 million. They've done about 3 million tests. We've done 35,000. 35,000. I mean, that's like testing the you know, students in University of Ibadan and University of Ife combined and then representing them as the entire country. We need to be closer to at least... 500,000 to a million tests. If necessary, Lagos should be tested separately from the rest of the country so that we, we understand is the, is, is the COVID pandemic spreading? In which direction is it spreading? How fast is it spreading? If you look at some countries of the world, they give data, local government by local government. If you go online in three minutes, you can tell which boroughs or local governments in the UK, in England, have more COVID, you can tell. When the program ends, just try it. You can tell. In Liverpool, have there been 10 you know, uh, cases today? You know, in uh, in Lewisham, have there been 50? You can, you, can, you can do the thing local government by local government. In South Africa, they are about to move now to uh, local government based uh, phase lockdown because they can track the data. Here we have no idea what is happening. So uh, without due Mr. respect Sankuri. to the Lagos State government, let me, let me interject, Mr. Sankuri. Is the most active Mr. Sankuri, can you hear me? Governors so far. The question of reopening the economy in Lagos, I think, is a bit dicey. 
But like I said, the governor did qualify it. He did say that depending on the data, it may take weeks, it may take months. But it is certainly too dangerous for it to be done in the next few weeks. Full reopening, we don't know where it's going to lead us at all. Mr. Rotomi Sankoe, journalist, thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics and for your contribution. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us. We're going to a quick break now, and when we return, more on Plus Politics. Stay with us.